In this video, I'm going to be going over the three methods of color picking, which are pretty critical since that every image is made of pretty much color and light, color and value, as it might be said otherwise. And um, I'm going to go ahead and drag these out to the center here. Oops. Trying to just drag these out. I think my computer's a little, a little slow for some of this recording stuff. So, the first method um, I recommend doing some research into would be the color wheel. And uh, most of us have seen these. If not, um, this is really great for coming up with color harmonies such as opposites. I recommend doing some research on uh, color theory. And um, one of my favorite books is by James Ker Gurney, James Gurney, and it's called Color and Light for the Realist Painter. And it goes over realism and how to paint and how light act. Um, otherwise, just look at some color theory on maybe YouTube so you can understand this wheel and get the most out of it. Because it really is a very, very useful tool. And one of the things that most people do is they tend to just choose the opposite side, you know, the warm and the cool uh, side of the wheel. And uh, this helps you come up with quite a wonderful harmony if used correctly. And down here we have the red, green, and blue sliders. You can up some blue or some green. What I like to do is go up to here and do the hue, saturation, value sliders. And that way if I'm painting with a color that I've selected, a little brighter so you can see it, and if I want to lower the saturation in an area of the picture, maybe I'm coming up towards a wall or something, I can lower it precisely and it goes exactly across here rather than accidentally wiggling it off to one area. And uh, as you can see, it has lowered the saturation of that color. And the more I do this, the more precise it is um, as I'm painting, even with a painterly brush. Um, this is one of the advantages of working digitally is that we can do things like that um, rather than kind of guess how much paint we're putting in or uh, something like that. Um, the next method that I really like is, uh, and I use quite a bit actually, is the color set libraries. And this is really useful for concept artists or people that are um, that really enjoy one color. You know, if there's a color you really like to save, you know, uh, go ahead and you know, at, if you want to make a new color set, just hit new color set, and I'll name this one new color set. All right, and there it is. And what I can do is I can add colors to this. If you know, if I'm working on the Frozen movie and we decide we need Olaf's nose to be a certain color before anything is a particular lighting, I'll go ahead and add that to my. Oh, I need to have this color selected. Excuse me. I'll go ahead and make it more of a yellow. Add that, and we have that there. Now I can consistently use that color throughout all my concepts um, and pieces of concept work uh, before actually lighting it. It'd be pretty useful for that reason. Or again, in case that you just really like that particular color, there are some different um, color set libraries that I use quite often. Uh, and here you can select, and it will open them in this here so that you have uh, more selections. Um, I do recommend making your own though of some of the colors that you really like. And the third and final uh, technique that I don't use very much myself but I sometimes use to um, see what my colors are going to look like is this mixer here. And some of that can be you know brought in from these color sets or uh, maybe in here if you want to pick some colors ahead of time I'll pick the apply color tool and I usually use a bigger size. It just kind of helps me keep things painterly and I don't know why I need it that much. <laughs> I kind of just put that all in there. Usually I just get a dab of something like that. And if I want a like a cool gray in there, right? And maybe I don't know, some green, kind of random. I can put those in there and you can see kind of how they act together. And you can actually use this brush to kind of mix them and kind of get in between colors and get some pretty kind of kind of harmony between them uh, and see how they see how they act together and then you can go ahead and select the color 
and use it in your painting. Or you can select multiple colors for some of like the oils that put out. For example, this brush here, actually, it's a good thing I have this out. If I select multiple colors here, it's actually going to show that in this blender bristle. Um, so that's it for how to select colors in Painter. I hope you found this useful and uh, I brought a little clarity to why there's three different ways and how that they work and how that you might prefer one over the other. And I will again see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.